So you are learning programming or you're already working on a project and now you want to buy a new machine. Specifically, if you want to buy a laptop, which one to buy? Now, I get this question a lot of time on YouTube, especially when I go live on YouTube, you know, in the, the chat window, I get this question. I want to buy a new machine, which one to buy? Now, I'm not a dead geek here. I am not a kind of person who will compare multiple machines here because I'm not that good with comparing the configuration here. I'm not, I will not be checking the benchmark of all the machines. I don't have multiple machines to show you, right? Now, but I will tell you when you buy a machine, what are the parameters you have to consider? Now, uh, I, I will be telling you all these things based on my experience from last seven years. I have used multiple machines. This is my, I guess, this is my seventh or sixth machine. Uh, so I will be talking about what you have to check when you buy a new machine, especially for programming. So let's get started. Welcome back aliens. My name is Devin Reddy and let's get started. Now, if you already have a machine with you, maybe a desktop or a laptop, that is completely enough to write a code or to, if you want to learn a programming, you can use any machine. Now, having a better machine will not make you a better programmer, okay? It's your skill set. But then having a good machine will, of course, will improve your performance. Uh, it will reduce your, uh, what do you say, time to build a project because when you build a project, it takes some time for building process, right? Compilation, running, and you want to see the instant output. That's where having a good machine will always help. Now, question is, if you want to buy a machine, what to check first? The first thing is the most important part is your budget, right? Now, it doesn't matter which is the best machine. Even if you talk about the best machine, I prefer MacBook, you know. I'm a big fan of Apple, so I prefer MacBook. This is the best machine you can have for programming. But the thing is, can you afford it? Now, I'm earning now. I'm in an earning stage, right? I'm, I'm working somewhere. I'm earning, so I can invest in this. In fact, I spend approximately... Uh, 14 hours with this machine and that's okay with me right if I if I'm spending my 14 hours a day with this machine uh, That's completely fine because I can invest now But think about this if you if you are in your college if you are started your career now th This is not a good option, right? This is damn costly Then we have to look for the machines which you can afford now when I was learning programming for the first time I was not having a good budget to buy a machine. So I bought a small netbook. Okay, it was uh, it was around 20,000 rupees, a small machine uh, which was having two giga, uh, which was having 1.6 gigahertz uh, CPU. That was dual core. Uh, it was having 2 GB of RAM and 2 GB of hard drive. Now, initially, it was completely enough for me. But now, since I'm working on multi multiple multiple projects, since I'm doing a video editing as well, we we need good machines, right? The second thing is, uh, depend upon your budget, which CPU, which machine you can afford. Now, I would prefer that increase your budget a bit, maybe around, in, if you talk about Indian currency, uh, let's go for 40,000 to 50,000 rupees. That's a, good, that's a good range to buy a machine now. See, uh, buying a laptop is actually an investment. I'm not, I, I will not, I'm, I'm not saying that uh, if, it, if you don't have a budget, you know, increase your budget, but then if you can do it, if it is possible for you, go for at least 40,000 to 50,000 if you're buying a laptop. Because if you buy a slower machine, just think about it, especially if you buy i3 now, it is completely fine to use i3 now, right? But then you are into learning phase now. So let's say if you learn Java, after that you'll be learning maybe, uh, you'll, be, you'll be learning advanced Java, you'll be working with servers, you'll be working with Android Studio, you'll be working with Visual Studio if you're going for Microsoft Path. If you are going for maybe big data in future, you will need huge processing power. I mean, think about it. It's a one-time investment, right? And of course, when you buy a laptop now, you have to use that laptop for the next two to three years. Right, so why don't you buy a good machine now by f paying 40 to 50,000 rupees? But again, if you cannot afford it, that's completely fine. Go for a slower machine now and start working, start earning, and you can buy a good machine later. So, if you have a budget of 40 to 50,000 50, now, of course, you should go for i5 machine. Again, if you talk about Intel field, we have i5 and i7, right? We also have i3, but then uh, i3 is not for, not for programmers, okay? Now, see, uh, when I say not for programmers, when you go to electronic showrooms, you know, we have different uh, sections there. We have sections, we have laptops for uh, business pe business professionals. We have laptop for gamers, right? If we talk about those ultrabooks, those slim, no, uh, slim laptop, that is for business people because they go here, here and there, they travel. So they need that. Gamers, they need high-end machine like Alienware, or maybe we have Asus ROG series now. We also have HP Omen series, right? All those machines are awesome. But then for programmers, we don't have any laptops, right? You will not find, hey, this is this machines are programmers, this machines are for, for programmers. We, we, we will not see that. So we have to choose best of the lot. 
So first thing is, either go for i5 or i7. If you have a good budget, go for i7, of course. But i5 is something which is needed now. Because if you are working with Android Studio, if you are working with Visual Studio, uh, if, you are, if you are a designer and if you want to work with those Photoshop tools, of course you need i5. Now, uh, there are some people, they say, you know, laptop is better than desktop because laptop you can carry. Of course, that's a good thing. But then, uh, in, if you talk about the i5 or, of laptops, it will have dual core CPUs. And i5 of, la of desktop will be having quad core. Again, in, in that we have, we have two choices. But then if you're going for laptops, make sure that you search for quad core. The price is a bit high, but if you're not able to get the quad core, go for dual core. At least i5 dual core. Uh, I would preferably go for 6th or 7th generation, don't go for 5th generation, that's a very old now. Go for 7th, try for 7th, but it will be damn costly. So go for 6th uh, go for sixth generation, that is fine. So i5, 6th or 7th generation. Now, that's the first thing, right? The second thing is you have to consider RAM. Now, how much RAM you need? Uh, 2GB, no, that is not enough, especially if you are using Windows, right? Uh, maybe 4GB, yeah, you can work with 4GB. In fact, uh, I have another machine which has 4GB RAM and it works, okay, it works. But the problem is when I use Windows on that, the moment I install, I run, I open Windows because that's a, that's a dual boot machine. So Ubuntu works completely fine. The moment I go for Windows, then I open uh, my STS, which is Spring Tool Suite for Spring applications. The moment everything loads up, you know, I can see my entire RAM is full. And the moment you open Chrome now and you're gone, you know. So 4GB is of course not enough for you. 8GB RAM is something we need now. Uh, maybe, again, they, there are some people, they will say, okay, we also have swap partition, but trust me, when you talk about swap partition, it will be taking a memory of hard drive, and your hard drive is the slowest, slowest part of your machine, okay? Uh, that's a bottleneck, you can say. So I would say i5, 8GB RAM, 16GB will be awesome, but at least 8GB is required now. The next thing is the hardware configuration, or the hard drive. Now, uh, the hard drive we talk about, I would say don't go, don't think about hard drive. See, you will think about one terabyte, you will think about two terabytes, but think about this, why, why do we need one terabyte or two terabytes? We are programmers, right? We are not buying a machine for games. We are not buying machines for watch movies, right? Why do, we, why do you need one or two terabyte hard drive? I would say, instead of going for hard drive, go for SSD. Uh, now, the thing is, when you buy a machine, you will get hard drive for, by default, right? So, have an extra budget for SSD. It will, trust me, it will improve your performance by 2x or 4x, right? So if, you're, if your Windows now loads in 10 seconds or maybe 15 seconds, using SSD, it will load in 6 to 7 seconds. It is that fast, right? So replace your hard drive with SSD if you're getting any hard drive. And you can use the same hard drive as your external hard drive, the way I'm doing now. So I have made my internal hard drive as my external hard drive using, using some cases. I do have a case. So you have to buy an external case for the internal hard drive, okay? You can convert that into an external hard drive. Uh, it works fine. So i5, 8GB RAM and SSD. Now minimum SSD will be 256GB, that is something we require now. So 256GB SSD, uh, if you cannot aff afford that, that's fine. You can still go for hard drive, that's fine, okay? So hard drive, SSD, uh, slash SSD, uh, RAM, 8GB and i5. The next thing we need is the screen resolution. You know, when you buy a laptop, having a full HD screen will be helpful. That to a 15.6 inch. Because if you buy a smaller machine like 13 inch laptop or 14 inch laptop, the problem is when you, as a programmer, when you work on your screen, you have to divide your screen into two parts, right? Sometimes we write a code in a dual mode. We have to write a code here, we have to write a code here. We also want to see the output, right? So if you can divide your screen into three parts, it will be awesome, right? You cannot do that with, we cannot do that with small machines. I would also recommend if you are using your laptop at home, Buy a small monitor. You don't need a big monitor now because I, I do this, I need this because of editing purpose. You can buy a small monitor and you can connect your laptop with monitor and it will be working fine if you're buying a small machine. But I would prefer go for 15.6 inch machines, right? And that to Full HD. Uh, the problem will be of cost because Full HD machines are costly. Uh, if you cannot afford, again, you can go back to HD screen, which will be having around 1300 into 768 uh, resolution. That's perfectly fine. Okay, so that's th those are the things you have to consider. Now, question arises: If you want, ah, there is one more thing. Now, as a programmer, instead of using Windows, I would I would recommend you to go for Linux machines, right? Because if you buy a Windows-based machine, 
uh, they will charge you three to four thousand extra. Example, if you buy a machine and that machine costs you around forty-five thousand rupees, just because it has Windows pre-installed, they will charge you forty-eight thousand for that. Again, you cannot go there and say, "Hey, I, I just want to remove that Windows, just uh, reduce my three thousand. That's not possible. So while you're searching for the laptop, search for Linux-based machines. I don't know. Will you get these machines in like uh, in offline showrooms? But you can get it online, right? Okay, so let's go to lab. Let's go to uh, Amazon.n. Depend upon which country you live, you can go for Amazon.com, Amazon. Amazon.n, and let's go to category and let's search for laptop. So we have a laptop here. Okay, now how to filter? You can see if you search for the laptops, you have thousands of laptops, and trust me, the more options you have, the more confused you will be. Uh, recently, I bought a laptop. It took me around five days to figure out which is the best machine for for me. So let me just help you with this. So. The first way to filter, okay, we have to filter the uh, filter the things here, right? So we'll remove i5. Uh, so we'll we'll check i5. We'll remove anything else. Again, you can go for i7 as well. Uh, you can go for i5. And again, uh, because I will not be showing any specific machines here, right? So technology will change in every three to four months, right? So uh, I will change the links in the description description area. So I, we have selected i5 here. The next thing we have to select is 8 GB RAM. And I would prefer a Linux-based machine. So I will go here and I will select Linux-based machine. And yeah, now you can see the reviews here. We got 22 reviews and we got 4.5 stars, right? Now I feel this is the best machine you can get at this price, price range, which is 43,000. This is Acer, right? This is an awesome machine. Uh, it, it clocks speed at 2.5 gigahertz and this is a dual core machine, I guess. Uh, it has 8 GB RAM, that to DDR4. Normally, that's a new new thing. Uh, we have one terabyte hard drive. Now, this is the only bottleneck you can see. We have one terabyte hard drive, that to with 5,400 RPM, which is very less. Uh, the new machines which you get is seven. It has 7,200 RPM, which is a better machine. But I would recommend you to replace this thing with your SSD. Buy SSD, and and the best thing is it has Linux in it, and it it, it does have a good review. So you can go for this machine or if I go back, uh, I guess that's the only machine you have. But let's say if you don't go for Windows, if you go, if you want to go for, if you don't want to go for uh, maybe Linux, if you want to go for Windows, I would say this looks good. This machine looks good. But this is the sixth generation machine, and that's fine. You know, with this price range, you can get six. Uh, you you will get a sixth generation that to HP. Again, brand doesn't matter nowadays because everyone provides you on-site support, right? That is one thing. One thing you have to consider. Now, one of the machine, uh, this is also good, the Vastro, this this is slim. In fact, I've used this machine in one of the company. I was I went for the training somewhere uh, in one of the company and they, they have given me this machine to use for one month. And this is an awesome machine. I have I do I do have an awesome hands-on experience on this machine. This is good machine. Uh, it has i5, 7 generation, 8 GB RAM. Everything seems good in this machine as well. Again, you can see we don't have any reviews because uh, this is a kind of business machine you can get, right? This is a good machine again. And yeah, so this is how you have to filter elements. And again, if you imp imp increase your budget, you will get better machines. Uh, one of the machine which I love, that is MacBook Pro. Okay, if you have a good budget with you, you can go with MacBook Pro. Again, it is costly, but trust me, once you buy this machine, you will love it. You will love working on your machines. The next machine you have is Dell XPS. Again, I love this machine. This is the second best machine you can get, uh, Dell XPS. But again, the cost is the issue. You can see the cost is very high. And I guess in India, it is not uh, readily available. The 15 inch machine. But again, you can search for this. If you can go to showrooms and if you can find this machine, this is, this is one of the best machine you can get. It is very slim. And for programmers, it is very fast because it has inbuilt SSD. Right, so yeah, that's how you you search for laptops on Amazon. You can also depend upon which e-commerce site you use. You can use any anything, but that's how you filter. So again, we don't have specific machines for programmers, okay? Uh, but then this is how you have to filter elements. So time in i5, AGB RAM, and uh, I would say SSD is preferable, right? Again, you can go for i7. If you select i7 here, of course you'll be having a better machines. So there are there are some awesome machines you can buy. Even this one is good. This uh, this one seems good. We have i7 seven generation, and it has 8 GB RAM. You can you can uh, you can you know we can change the uh, configuration. This is one of the machines which I bought recently, but I bought i5 one with Windows, of course. Yeah. So that's that's my 
view on laptops that's how i buy laptops i hope it was helpful for you and if you enjoyed this video make sure that you click on the like button and do subscribe for further videos